welcome back to the Art to Life podcast. I am still in Mallorca. Uh, I just finished an Art to Life workshop. In fact, I finished two of them. So I was thinking uh, this past week uh, what I was going to share with you from these workshops. And what I came up with was three of the biggest uh, challenges people have. Something that I found myself interestingly talking about and it's some some new things that kind of came up and and i i'm pretty certain that some of these things you'll relate to if you're into making art or interested in creativity because a lot of what i talk about relates to life making uh the same as it does to art making but uh first of all let me just tell you this <clears throat> mallorca uh, one of the Balearic Islands in Spain is so beautiful. Uh, been walking around and um, this, the weather's been really great. It can change here quite easily. Uh, I've been here this time, you know, late October um, in the past and it's been really rainy, but it just it's kind of like the Bay Area. It gets, it can get rainy, but then it just clears up and it's really sunny. And, and, um, so right now it's just this amazing sunny patch. So I'm in the little town of Valencia, um, not far from La Serenia, which is a small villa that we do this workshop in. I've been coming back to this place for years. It's very small. It's about, I think we have 17 or 18 people. Um, and we have uh, long meals, <laughs> you know, together. We all fit on one table. And we have a small studio that we work out of. And I mean, a lot of the learning happens in the studio, but a lot of learning happens out of the studio too. And so we had lots of conversations um, around uh, these ideas. And, and what I'm going to share with you today are three of them, three things that came up a lot. Uh, number one, holding on to too much, uh, trying to hold on to too much. And God, do we, I mean, we, this relates to me and that closet I have back home, you know, not willing to let go of things, but it, it's really, uh, something that can challenge us in our art when we have a lot of things going on in our art, what we're showing, what parts we think of ourselves, we have to be a certain kind of artist, all that. So I'll be talking about that, holding on to too much. Um, I'll be talking about proportions. Proportions were up uh, in this workshop and in the Morocco workshop. It is something that I've never talked so much about this ever. And it was almost across the board, one of the most helpful things uh, to kind of get your arms around for, for changing things. It's kind of great because you don't have to redo something. All you got to do is change the proportions of what we're seeing. And then the third one uh, was around practicality. <laughs> practicality. Um, we are hardwired to be practical. Everything, we like that. We like... Um, things to be on time. We like certainty and art making is not practical or especially the headspace of art making is not practical. So I'll be diving into that as well. So those three, three topics, um, are kind of some of the, some of the big takeaways for me. They were what I was writing down at night after teaching all day on Tuesday and Wednesday. It was like, God, what is this practicality thing is coming up so much? Came up at the dinner table. Uh, these were themes, uh, that, that are up for artists right now because I just been working with about 80 of them. And, and these are, this is up from all over the world, right? So. Um, so let's dive into this. Uh, first one, holding on to, to too much. Um, you know, I talk about art making in terms of differences. Uh, uh, in first, first and foremost, if you want to feel more alive and feel excited and motivated and inspired, you need to be doing things uh, that are new for you that don't feel routine. We always need a change a venue. Um, that's why I go to these different places. Um, but <clears throat> it's really important that 
the, the overarching idea of differences is understood. This is what we're including in our art. Things that uh, are contrasting. Things that we find, the colors that we love. We have to learn how to use color to optimize that color so it looks even more amazing. We have to learn how painting loosely can be enhanced by learning to be more controlling. And we have to understand how being out of control um, and understanding that it's okay at times to really not know what we're doing because soon enough you gain confidence and that's a beautiful compliment. Those are, those are differences. Those are opposites. Um, having depth in the work as opposed to having it all be flat. When we introduce something that creates depth, it's amazing, especially if what we're looking at is flat. <laughs> so, uh, so just sort of, I'm f sharing this with you because it kind of leads into this idea of holding on to too, too much. So where this shows up in art making is, uh, and I, and I see this with colors too, where we think, uh, that by adding more, we are going to have something with more and it, in art, it really doesn't work that way. It's, uh, kind of great. It really teaches us things about life. It's like that overwhelming feeling when you go into Costco, I don't know if, all of you listening have Costco's. They seem to be pervasive all over the world. Uh, Costco's are just giant, giant industrial stores that have everything from TV sets to giant flats of strawberries to all the cheeses you can imagine, the eggs. Everything is supersized. Everything is cheap, but you got to buy a lot of it. You can't just buy one toothbrush. You got to buy a 10 pack or a six pack. And, you know, this is, it's almost like Christmas time when you go into this store at first, because everything's there. Everything you could, from tomato plants to car tires to prescription sunglasses to vacations, even um, travel agency stuff, um, your favorite tea, your favorite coffees, biscuits, cookies, fruits, organic fruits, cheeses, milk, everything's there. And but there's a feeling at least for me, when I go there, and sometimes I go there, especially if I'm going to be doing a local workshop and we need to buy a lot of food or whatever all at once, um, you you feel kind of empty when you get home. It kind of drains you in, in an odd way. And and I don't know, and this this might be just me, but I'll share it with you anyway. Being in Europe and going down the, in this little town right now and you can walk everywhere and there's this really cool cheese place and you can go and get a piece of cheese. You don't have a big selection. In fact, you're just going to one place to buy a piece of cheese and there's good ones there and amazing cheese, but there's a whole smell in there. There's a whole rich experience as opposed to just throwing a giant, a giant, uh, huge four pack of cheese in your cart in two seconds and moving on, you know? So what I'm saying is more isn't necessarily better. And in our art, when we have come from something, we've been making realistic boat paintings, or we've done abstract paintings and we've been known for, we've gotten good at that and it's comforting to do it. And it it's successful at it. We tend to include that for a long time, even if we're trying to go into a new direction. And, um, and so it's important to, to understand that we often hang on too long to, to, to these things that we think we need to have in our work. I, I was having so many conversations with people about like, well, you know, I'm at this workshop and I'm trying some new things, but I also do this at home. And so this is kind of what I do right here. And I'm trying to add this to it. And instead of just trying something new or really identifying what the thing is that you're excited about and going deep on that, really making that a priority, um, we bring along on all these other things and it, and it kind of dilutes what we're trying to do. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to 
you know, describe this. And it's tricky because most of the time in life, we, we think adding more is better, better value. We have more attributes to a hotel. <laughs> you know, we have, uh, oh my God, it's got a jacuzzi and it's got this spa and it's got a workroom, you know, plus it's easy walking. We always think all these things are more and more and more, but you only really need to see one difference in the work. Right? I talked about difference a few minutes ago. What is the thing that we are excited about? Let's say it's color and we love this orange color and, but we've always done animal paintings, but we love color. And so we, we do a, a, a skunk painting and we make it orange thinking that the, the, the excitement of orange will come through. And it might come through a little bit for us because certainly we're using orange, but if most of the painting is orange, but we also have a skunk in there that's realistic, say, um, we are not going to really see so much the color because we also are going to be looking at the skunk. And so, you know, so you, you can, you can minimize, uh, minimize these things that you've had in the past, or at least, and here's the workaround, at least, reduce their noticeability. Um, if you want to make something that is color is the subject in a way that we love the color, then don't make the, the contrast really high. Don't make a giant design, high contrast design, because we'll see that. And so the question is, what do we need to let go of in order to let us see the things that we are holding that we want to be seen. What do we have to let go? There's always something we need to let go of in order to go to the next step. And this is hard to do. And, and this showed up so many, so many different ways. I mean, we were talking about Instagram, right? And people are like, oh, I don't, I don't really, I don't think I'm very articulate. And, you know, it's always the people who always say that speak so beautifully. It kills me. But, you know, and I was saying, well, in order for you to do this, in order for you to really come out and share, post a video or whatever, or get over the limiting belief that you can't shoot, a, you know, a good video, you have to drop the feeling that drop that story that you're not a good speaker. Otherwise, you're or a good videographer, you're never going to move forward. What is that thing that we have to let go of? And you don't have to entirely let go of it. And this is this is the way out of this thing as I'm going to give kind of a solution to each of these challenges. You can move slowly. You can take small steps. So make the skunk smaller in the painting and make it more about color. If you're not ready to get rid of something, just reduce it. Just make it smaller and smaller and smaller and make the other thing bigger and bigger and bigger. It will teach you and give you confidence in time to just let go of it all together. I've told the story many times of me. I had, I felt like I had to include a bird in every painting because it was so abstract and kind of, it was just it seemed like, well, what is this about? If there's no bird, no one's going to buy it. And I had this whole story. Uh, and, and I finally, the birds went away, but it took a while and they got smaller and they're off to the side and, you know, the, the birds even got more abstract at one point. Um, so what do you need to lose? Um, how you're, what are you holding on? What, what are you trying, what are you holding too much of? Uh, that's, that's, that you're dropping, that you that let some of these things go, you know, and then things will shift in your life and your art. So the second one that we dove into were, was proportions. And this was crazy. And, and in a way, this is some, somewhat related to the, to the last one because it has to do with relationships. Um, proportions are something that you be, first become aware of and you, and you get a big jump in your work when you become aware of them. And certainly this idea of differences, if we have small things or big things, proportions of, of spaces and areas and, and shapes even and color fields, whatever in our work, it really relates to that. It, proportions are so, so important. When we see it, we start noticing it and we realize that the human being loves things that are different. 
Well, taking proportions and adjusting them so we have a large thing and a really thin thing and a really, you know, wider thing, just the proportions, just the ratio of numbers. If I, if I have three numbers and they're three, three, and three, um, those proportions are really even. And there's a quality to that of evenness. But if I want to have more exciting proportions, again, differences, diff things that are different, light us up, and I have one, seven, and, and three, well, those proportions really enhance each other. So that's the same thing with, with the sizes of things. And, and, but here's what goes on. When you become aware of this, you you get a kind of jump in your work, but then, when so you correct it all the time and it's like okay that's better and then we move on but here's what i see in workshops and this is the area that was making a huge difference i really leaned into it with people i'd come by with what they were working on and yeah there were areas that were bigger and there were areas that were smaller but i would then say can you go even further still push this even further. And there's no way you're going to do this on the first go. You know, it's like you, it's like a, a rough draft. You know, you've got to do a kind of shitty rough draft in order to then get it out and then go at it again. And proportions are so like that. I never can get it right the first time ever. So if you're adjusting things and just setting things up and okay, it looks pretty good. And then I go on, I'm, I'm telling you this because I want you to go back into it and, and refine and, and really it's pushing further. It's a little, it almost makes you uncomfortable. Like go even closer to the top of the image, right? Push those proportions even further. There was a thing that happened at the workshop where there, this, um, artist had made, she had made this painting and it was pretty far along and looked pretty good. And, I saw it and I had been helping her on these proportions and I, I saw it kind of in the corner of my eye, what she had done. And I was like, Oh my God, that's so much better. And I pointed at what she was doing and her board, one of the boards was on the table and some paper had, uh, you know, some of her note paper was, were, was kind of on top of it, which I didn't realize. And the paper was covering up, um, part of the bottom of the painting. So the proportions look great. But they, she hadn't done it. She goes, Oh my God, thank you. And she picked up the board and the paper fell off. And I was like, Oh my God. So I kind of ran over and I was like, No, 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 no. Look, I was, I was looking at this. Look what the paper has done. It looks like white space. It looks like, you know, it's been cropped here a little bit and it looked so much better. And so we ended up, um, we ended up cutting the board because it was like, she wanted this board because she loved it so much. She's like, this is, I'm going to keep looking at this. And this is something I suggest, you know, when you get a proportions of things or anything in your work, that's amazing. You want to kind of hang on to it to learn from it. So she loved this 12 by 12 board with the bottom one and a quarter inches covered up with white. So we ended up cutting it off. So it wasn't quite a square, but it, the painting looked great. And she kept it and she kept it on her table the whole week. Um, so she could kind of look at it. Um, so, um, you can gain an extra like 15, 20% by pushing proportions more than you think, at least play around with it. It's really an area that, um, can just take your work to the next level and cropping the way out of this, the way to sort of see this, um, you try your best, but try using cropping bars where you can cover up areas and adjust them. It's very hard to make it, but it's easier to see it. This idea when you are getting better at proportions, what this means is that you're looking at your work more objectively, more from the top of the world, kind of like looking down on it. Because proportions mean that everything has been considered in relationship to everything else. I hope that makes sense. We are looking at this thin area and we're making it like less thick because at the bottom, there's another shape that's more similar and we're making that fatter and we're adjusting things and we're going round and round and we're looking at everything. 
And it's, it's a very uh, kind of high level way to see things, to, to adjust things. And it's different than focusing on parts, right? Like we'll get the corner working and then we're going to go to the right side and we're going to get that working. We want to be looking at everything together and that's called proportions. That, that's how we do proportions. So proportions come from this next level way of seeing everything. It's almost like you're God and you're making the art and everything is up for review. You're always reviewing. When you make a little change on something, you see that change, how it affects the other things. You know, this is what amazing speakers do or presenters. You know, they're, they're introducing things into a group. They're seeing how it lands. They're adding something over here. They're calling on a person in the back row. They're working the whole room. The whole thing is being considered. So the cropping is a good way to surprise yourself and just go around till you find something that is looks till you can get it, see if you can get it more exciting. Again, it's hard to paint it. It's hard to make it like that in the beginning, but it's helpful to use cropping bars, um, just even white pieces of paper that are cut clean and come in on it, move things, adjust things and see how the shapes um, change and modify. If you find again and again and again that you find it in your work, that's fantastic. The next step is to be able to make it like that. So you can't crop it and make it look better. It is cropped. That's the edge of the painting. Okay. Um, so I, I hope that was helpful, right? So we've gone over this holding too much, you know, hold, trying to hold too many things at the same time to let go of them. And I've talked about now these proportions and, and how overview is so, so important and that you, that you need to push it to the next level, that you can refine things. And it takes a couple goes. Don't stop at one or two, go three or four and just push this in your work. It's the one area you can gain so much improvement and it, and it pushes it into an area that makes your work more different than what's out there. It makes it more personal and it makes it more desirable as a result. The third one was something that came up a lot, and it's around practicality. Um, man, this, this shows up everywhere. So, and what I'm talking about is um, being realistic. And I'm, I'm not saying realistic like paint a realistic picture. I'm talking about that story that we tell ourselves that we were raised on so many of us that we couldn't do something that being an artist, um, and I know I'm not speaking, everyone doesn't have this experience, but this comes up a lot for people. So I'm sharing it, uh, that becoming an artist is not practical. It's not really realistic. I mean, even when I say that, I mean, I can half believe it. I've heard it so much, you know, um, to think, who are you to think that you can just make something? And you don't even, do you really call yourself an artist and you're going to make something and there's been all the Picassos in the world and the history of art and you're going to come up with something today after thousands and thousands of artists who are amazing and look in all the museums and you're going to make something that is going to sell, that someone's going to want and you didn't even go to art school or you've been doing another career all your life. Who are you to think that? It's just not really, um, why don't you be a little bit more realistic? <laughs> And I saw this show up. I saw it show up in conversations around uh, one artist. She really would love to sell her work. Works great, by the way. There's no problem selling it. She's never sold it. Doesn't think it's practical. Doesn't think it's probably a realistic thing to go. She only has so much money uh, for her retirement and, and she has to keep doing this certain kind of soul sucking job perhaps because it's not practical to think that your art can, can replace that. I mean, who does that? You can't sell your art, right? All these things. And it shows up in squirting out paint on the palette even. 
here we are in this workshop and there's everyone has all the paint it's all included <laughs> so but people are so miserly you know like they won't put out very much paint so they because they don't want to waste it like i don't like i might go to dinner and i might not use all of it you know and i'm just like pour and paint because painting thick has such a great quality to it. It really is beautiful, especially next to paint that's really transparent. But getting people to use the materials and to, and, and to be, um, impractical to not be so conservative. And I mean, literally we're talking about, you know, a dollar fifty worth of paint or a dollar twenty five worth of paint. I mean, it's, it's not wasteful. It's just, it's not even, relevant but it shows up and it and it holds people back they just feel more constrained um art making is not <laughs> practical in the best sense of the word it's mysterious it is wondrous right um we it, it's soulful we go on intuition we guess we think about what we might do and it never turns out it is so impractical but that's its value that's what makes it so realistic it's the most secure creativity and leaning into this is such a such a practical smart <laughs> you know um a reliable thing to develop because it makes something that's unique because it makes something that's of you. And because it's of you, it's more, it's, it's, it's desirable because other people notice it because it's not like them. And they, as I was saying in the beginning of this, that's a difference in their life. They grab hold of your work. They want, they could never imagine doing it. They bring it home and it makes them feel great because it's not like them. And so we just have to get really good at making things that are more like us. But this practicality thing, um, can, can totally, uh, totally get in the way. One artist came with, uh, didn't bring all the hardwood boards, um, because they're heavy and it's, they're, they're heavy. They're really, they're expensive, but they're heavy because they're wood and they're, you know, and I've researched all these places and I always like them because it's so nice to paint on this board that's heavy duty and it's kind of stiff and you can frame it. It's like a thing, you know, and same thing with the paint, you know, the paint's really good quality. Arts of Life paint's really good quality and the brushes are good and all the things. Um, but anyway, she, it was, it's fine, but she brought, um, MDF and it was a lot, lot thinner. And I am always looking for materials that are more, uh, that are, that are less heavy, of course, because we ship this stuff all over the world. But these were very, very thin. And of course, thin material, and it's pretty inexpensive because it's thin. And I mean, it's going to be fine to paint on. It's still a 12 inch by 12 inch square. But the problem is, is it warps. It kind of starts becoming like a potato chip. And, I guess, you know, you can bend it back, but, um, it, it definitely, when we looked at all the work, she had a couple of these that she did on this skinny, really thin boards that were warped, you know, that were warped at the end. And, and people always leave the workshops and they take their favorite work. And sometimes they leave some materials and everything, but she left these behind. And one of them was, I thought was a really great painting, but it just was like, and I get it. It's just like, well, God, this is, this is, it kind of takes your energy away. You know, it's like a potato chip. Um, and, and so it's not practical to fly around the world and bring all these art supplies or send all the people. It's not practical to go to Morocco to, to do an art workshop. Um, it might not even be realistic, but man, is it worth it? <laughs> you know, it's, we want to stay in the world of the exception. 
you know, I always felt better when I was going, uh, when I was driving into the studio. I had a studio in San Francisco at one time and I'd go in at all these weird hours and there was rush hour. And I always felt good if the traffic jam was going the other way and I was going the way the, the fewer people were going. You know, it's art is about the exception. Artists are exceptional. They're entrepreneurs. They're people who think of alternative ways of doing things. This is, this is the fun of it. This is the artful way to live. It's about choosing, um, ways to do things that are not based on what everyone else is telling you to do. You know, um, that Costco store that I described, you know, it's so damn practical. It, it brings me to tears. I buy so much food. I have, I have sunflower seeds for three years. I have so much cornflakes and, you know, and I can't fit it all in the damn cupboard, you know, cause I get greedy when I'm there or I have to buy so many and then half of it goes stale. And then if you don't like something, you've got to eat it all because <laughs> you've got so much of it, you know? Um, so <clears throat> I know practicality and being realistic is something that we we strive for in our normal lives and and that that's good you know i guess but our art making is where we're not practical where we beat the odds where we do the power of doing something that matters to you following your soul the soul is not practical it doesn't care about any of that but there is something so rock solid. And I, I'm just saying this because it, it is practical. You know, if, if you're looking for an insurance policy, uh, for your boring job, art is a good one. Art is a great side hustle because it brings you alive. And the small steps to get out of this way of thinking. Um, and I get, we can't get there. We've had a lot of conditioning. We can't get there necessarily in one step. So, um, we take small steps to get out of it. We spend, um, we pour out a little bit more paint, right? We get a little bigger brush. We, you know, it's just small steps so we can get the hang of it, right? We can have, you know, if our friend, you know, has an open studio, we can put a couple of our pieces in it because to see, right? It's, it's not a risky thing. If you think it's so impractical to try and sell your work, well, don't try and spend a whole year making a ton of art and put your whole bank, you know, keep the soul sucking job, keep the job going and just do this in a little small way. Offer something for sale on Instagram or whatever it is, you know, and, and, and let that confidence come. Let yourself be taught that, that this practicality thing um, doesn't need to be in all aspects of our life. It certainly doesn't need to be in our art life. Um, it's quite, quite the opposite. So um, we had conversations endlessly about this, not believing we're an artist, that some of us are artists. <laughs> we had a person in the workshop who was so good. And she literally was saying, you know, like, it's so, so great to be with all you artists, you know, like, I'm not really an artist, but you guys, it really lifts me up. I mean, she was genuinely feeling, talking about how great it was with to be with these artists because she wasn't one, but she was learning a lot here and kind of here. And it was, it was hilarious. You know, it's like her work was so good. And, um, you know, because it's like, I don't trust the shaky waters of if I step into this too deep, if I say I'm an artist, you know, like all bets are off, you know? So we want to own it. We want to, we want to, Love this aspect, love the impracticality, the wonder, the mystery. It's so cool to start something you don't know how is it going to work out and watch what happens. Watch how you go to the supermarket and the, the color idea comes to you when you're like picking up the eggplants, whatever it is. It, the, it works, art works in such mysterious ways. So 
I hope those were helpful. Those were the big ones from the workshop. Every, every year it's different. Every season is different. Um, sometimes it has a lot, it's usually a lot more to do with color. Um, that wasn't the case this time at all. Um, so, um, I hope, I hope that was helpful. Um, really excited. I got one more workshop coming up in Haramara in Mexico, um, in Sayulita. Uh, and that's going to be really fun. That's in, in December. So um, I know some of you are coming to that. I'm so excited to see you. If some of you are here for the first time, if you go to arttolife.com, you can sign up for our Sunday vlog. Um, every Sunday I share something. I did a bunch of stuff from the workshop. I'm teaching things, talking about social media. I'm talking about certain tools, all kinds of things. I mean, I've been doing this for years and there's just a ton of information and we've got a lot of people there who are, um, we're just helping each other. And that's what's so great about the Art to Life community. You know, we're we're learning together and, and it's the best. It's, it's the most fun, you know. So check that out if you're um, if you're interested. And again, I so appreciate you being here. If you have a friend um, who uh, is looking to become more creative, to understand creativity and bring more of that into their life, um, I would so appreciate you sharing this podcast. Um, so. You guys, thanks so much for being here and I'll see you next week right here on the Art to Life podcast. Okay, bye.